Did you know, in the new Magic the Gathering expansion, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, Wizards actually released a hidden card. And that is none other than the Six Pack of Oko. With XXX Mana, the Six Pack of Oko grants you and your opponent a thirst counter, leaving you too lovestruck to attack the enemy. Just kidding. Today we are actually going to dive into the story of Oko, the ringleader, and explore what he is up to in Thunder Junction. Hello, it's me, it's CGB, and welcome to the first episode of Planeswalker Points. As you might know, Oko came from an unknown plane ruled by a fairy-like species known as the Fae's. Mischievous in nature, the ruling class decided to suppress the nature of the Fae's for the society to function. Oko disagreed and was outraged at the hypocrisy of the Fey rulers, which led to his arrest and a suppression surgery of his shape-shifting powers. This traumatic event ignited his spark and caused him to planeswalk for the first time to Eldraine, leading to the throne of Eldraine Ark. Oko's plan to destabilize the entire plane would ultimately foil, with him barely escaping a certain death from Garuk. Turns out, unlike many fellow planeswalkers, Oko actually retained his spark during the disparking, which allowed him to planeswalk to Thunder Junction. But here's the catch. He was there because Ashiok hired him to steal the key of Magtarana, a vault containing raw magical powers from Greywater, the CEO of the native Sterling Company. To accomplish this, he formed a team of outcasts, a band of MTG villains. Breaches, a goblin pirate and explosives expert. Tiny Bones, a funny little harmless skeleton. Gissa and Giralf, the necromancer siblings. Ariette, the beguiling witch from Wilds of Eldraine. And Annie Flash, the sharpshooter investigator native to Thunder Junction, who could actually see through Oko's shapeshifting illusion. The mission was going well for our MTG Suicide Squad until, surprise, Kellen the half Fay, who we've seen in multiple sets recently, is also in Thunder Junction, looking for his father. But who could it possibly be? Hint, Fay. Answer, of course, it's Oko. I am your father. The two immediately recognized each other, and Oko tried to recruit Kellen to his team after seeing his raw magical powers. Now this is actually a very interesting dilemma. Will Oko, the manipulative master, redeem himself through Kellen, or will he continue his mischievous, backstabbing nature? The story continues even though the band successfully retrieved the key. They had to find Nolan, someone who studied ancient magic, to show the team how to use the key. He was unfortunately captured by the Sterling Company on a train traveling to the headquarters, where the team had to extract him. Now before the mission, Kellen was actually hesitant to join the team as he feared innocent people might be harmed. It was then where Oko assured him, quote, No innocence will be harmed. Sure, Oko. Sure. During the heist, Oko decided to blow up the train track to buy time for the extraction team to escape leaving the train to fall into a massive gap. When Kellen decided to stay behind and help the innocents on board to safety, Oko encouraged him to give up as there was simply no time. Refusing to let the innocents die, Kellen continued to stay behind and used all his magical power to prevent the train from collapsing into the gap. With the Sterling Company reinforcements coming any minute, Oko made an important choice. Yep. You guessed it, he decided to bail on his son, and escaped. In the end, Annie Flash did come back to save Kellen, and the chapter ends. Meanwhile, Oko's team has a new mission. They realize they only managed to obtain one of the six keys for the vault, and the rest of the keys are actually in Tarnation, the headquarters of an evil gang known as the Hellspurs, led by the massive scorpion dragon, Akul. As soon as the team arrived at Tarnation, Kellen, being a small little half fay was immediately picked on by one of the Hellspur's brutes. To everyone's surprise, Oko defended Kellen this time. However, Oko's team soon found themselves overwhelmed and eventually defeated and captured by Akul. 
Before Akul had the chance to execute them, Kellen, out of nowhere, decided to challenge him to a one-on-one -on -one duel. However, since Kellen was only starting to explore his magical powers, he was no match for the ferocious warrior. Just when all hope was lost, the unexpected happened. Raywater's Sterling Company arrived in Tarnation to conquer the town with its army. Amidst the chaos, Oko managed to get a hold of the remaining keys from Akul. But unfortunately for Kellen, he was caught in the crossfire between the Hell Spurs and the Sterling Company. In this scene, Oko faced the same choice as before. And ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it, Oko bailed on his son for a second time. Turns out, this was all a big setup from Oko. He wanted to get caught by a cool in the first place and get close to him, while also tipping Greywater the coordinates of Tarnation, so that the Hellspur would be too busy fighting off an invasion to prevent Oko from stealing the treasure. Fortunately for Kellen, Ral Zarek, the planeswalker who developed communication across the omen paths, came to his rescue. Disappointed by his father's betrayal, Kellen finally realized Oko will never be the father he wanted him to be. Coming to terms with that, Oko is simply a stranger and not a father to him. Kellen joined Rahl in a quest to destroy the treasure inside the vault so that it will never fall into the wrong hands. Now this is where the main battle began. Kellen versus Oko, facing off against each other, with Kellen harshly saying, the only thing you've taught me is to never trust you again. The two battled, and with Kellen finally accepting his father would never change, he unlocked a dormant magical power inside of him and managed to overpower Oko. Just before Kellen could subdue Oko, Ashiok ambushed Kellen and stole the key right out from under them. To everyone's surprise, there is actually no treasure inside the vault but an alien baby creature named Loot. What's more surprising is that Ashiok is not Ashiok at all, but an illusion of Jace. This all makes sense now with the art of the latest legendary planeswalker. Jace reawakened has a faded shade of Ashiok. Jace revealed that he and Vraska had been using Oko's team to get to the creature inside the vault. Before Oko could react to this treachery, Jace and Vraska and Loot planeswalked away ending the story as the team vowed for revenge. Personally, this is a very powerful expansion for Oko. When stuck between his family and his own personal gains, Oko chose the latter twice. It is revealed that Oko never truly cared for his son, as Kellen was simply a tool to complete the mission. The continuous manipulation and false promises seem to portray Oko as a character who is simply incapable of true love. He's a bad boy but maybe we can change him. The card text doesn't seem to give us many hints either. Oko will become a copy of target creature you control until end of turn, and he can also create a copy of a non-land permanent, which reinforces his shape-shifting ability and powers of illusion. Basically, Oko will be what you want him to be, as long as it suits him. This sets the scene for the next expansion. Will there be a redemption arc where Oko finally puts his family first? Or is he incapable of affection because of his fey nature and the traumatic events that he has endured? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next one. You're cool.